In this clip, we're going to learn about the ray render node. Okay, so let's go ahead and replace our scanline render with the ray render node. So I'm going to go ahead and type in ray, and you'll see ray render comes up, and it's got exactly the same inputs as our scanline render. So I'm just going to select the scanline and delete it. And we'll hook our camera up to this pipe here, which is where our camera is flowing from. And then the object scene pipe into the scene. And now you can see that that is hooked together. Now, we're not noticing much of a difference in the aliasing we're getting here. And that's just because by default, the ray render isn't doing a lot for us. So if I come in here to the ray render tab, I can start to play around with some options here. So there's a few different things we can do. The cubic filter here is going to leave all of the sampled pixels here the way they originally looked. But we can start to get into some of these other choices for our filters and you're going to see different types of remapping pixels so that they're receiving smoothing. Sometimes they're going to be receiving sharpening, you know, maybe it's a medium or a significant amount. They all have different options. Now, one really cool thing I love about Nuke is that you can go to the help really easily just by clicking this little question mark. And if you click it, it's going to take you to a page um, like this one right here. And you would be able to go in and you can see all of the different inputs for that filter. So it'll tell you, you know, what the impulse filter does, what cubic does. So if you're unfamiliar with some of these terms, you can go in and find out exactly what you're going to be getting there. So based on what we're seeing, it's not really going to change these edge pixels because that's based more on the samples here. Um, but as far as what this is looking like. So if we feel like this is looking just a little too, um, you know, kind of chunky in here, which it is a bit, you know, right there, it's looking very kind of stair stepped. We can go in and choose a different one. So, um, the Mitchell filter, for instance, is going to add some blurring to hide some of that pixelation. So you can start to see what that actually would look like. And when we come out to 100%, again, you know, this doesn't look as good as our other version, but we are seeing something there. And also our scale is, is not great right now. So, um, you know, things are going to look a little bit differently than they did whenever we were just bringing in the render from um, from our render artist. Now along the edge here is where we're seeing some significant stair stepping. So this is where we can get into our samples. Um, so at zero, obviously there's no samples, it's not even working. So as we start to bring that up, one is where it would actually start to even be able to render for us. And then you can see as I increase this number, we start to get some more of, you know, that smoothing along that edge. Now, the higher the number, you can see eventually there's no difference even being made by the amount that I'm bringing it up. And the higher you bring it up, the longer it's going to take to render. So it's a good idea to find a kind of middle ground, somewhere where you feel like you're getting enough smoothing along the edge, but you're not cranking it up as high as it could go, and then it's just going to take you forever to be able to render that out. So you know, probably somewhere under 10 for this is a good idea. Now we've also got our intersection epsilon. So what is that talking about? That's talking about the error threshold for our triangle ray calculations. So whenever the ray of this render, you know, it shoots out this little point and it looks for this, um, geometry, how many errors are we going to allow? And it's got an extremely low error rate, which, you know, the higher that is, then the faster it's going to go in terms of uh, render time. Now, 
this looks way too bright. So we could go in and add a light and kind of start to play around with that because right now there is no lighting. But I really just wanted to give you a taste of how you would use the ray render with a 3D object um, and how you could actually use a diffuse texture or something like this to kind of throw it on some 3D geometry. And this is a great way for you to be able to show your render artist, okay, this is kind of what I'm wanting him to look like. And then they can, you know, get something together if you're still wanting to use that card system like what we've gotten so far. Because it is a little bit more work to get all the lighting and rendering just the way you want it. For something like this, we're actually getting a 3D uh, image into a realistic looking scene like ours. Um, so this is a great thing to do though for if you've got text or some kind of motion graphics or something where you're not going for this realism look that we've got um, in our live plate because it's really easy to quickly crank out some, some 3D in another application, bring it into Nuke and very easily manipulate it in a way that feels, um, you know, real enough for something like motion graphics. Absolutely. So let's go ahead and move on to our next lesson um, and also our next module where we're going to be starting to get into some text and how you can use and create text inside of Nuke. So join me in the next module to learn about all things text.